ever. Now you in a corner trying to put it together. What we've seen of Elizabeth Holmes dancing is kind of jarring. Jerky was definitely a description that I would hear. She just leans into it. And so every time I got to lean into it, I fucking leaned into it. I'm Amanda Seifert. My name is Naveen Andrews. My name is Liz Merriweather, and I'm the creator and executive producer of The Dropout. This is Francesca Gregorini. I directed two episodes. This is Variety's Making a Scene. Dancing to hip hop was, I guess, the thing that she did when she thought nobody was looking. So you see that kind of in the earlier episodes, and it felt like a kind of secret language between them. We were both totally committed to that kind of world that they inhabited where they felt safe. You might be laughing at it, I might be laughing or horrified <laughs> by how they interact, but they're not. It's a communion, if, if I can say that, you know, of, of some kind. <laughs> this is episode five and it's called The Flower of Life. I think this series really takes a turn in this episode. This scene is a little lighter and I think I purposefully kind of wanted it to, to be a little bit lighter as a little bit of a break from the kind of darker tones in, the, in this episode. Cut the music up. Yeah. Listen, if you're blessed enough to set any scene to Little Wayne, you're already on top. <laughs> you're already winning. I heard it and I just had this reaction of like, oh, I remember like loving this song. The lyrics that I had to sing, I kept doing it wrong. There was maybe like three takes where I got it right. Had a and now I'm in the corner. Like I didn't. I still don't know it. I realized that the lyrics were just so um, appropriate for what was going on between them or what the dynamics of their relationship were, you know, that neither of them really know how to love. Because originally, uh, uh, the way it was written, Sonny was um, lip syncing as well. We shot that and then we ended up cutting it out because I wanted it to be like really clearly her trying to make it up to him. So it was like trying to sing it to him and him sort of listening. But Even though she's trying to like get him to smile and get him to feel for her, it, like an endearing, like it's an endearing kind of thing. I don't think it's lighthearted. I, I think it's just their way of communicating. That's, this, this is how they communicate. They dance with each other. Never had love, no, no. What we've seen of Elizabeth Holmes dancing is kind of jarring. That image, that video of her getting up on stage and it will never be forgotten. And so I just took it with me and I built on that. I didn't talk to her about what the dance was gonna be. And so that was all Amanda and um, truly, truly master stroke. Jerky was definitely um, a, a description that I would hear. I really credit Amanda for sort of making that character choice. It's so identifiable now to that character and makes her so lovable and also makes her lovable to Sonny because you can see him melting, <laughs> even though she's like such a funny dancer. She just leans into it. And so every time I got to lean into it, I fucking leaned into it. The way he was looking at her, it was like she was a goddess. He didn't see spas spasmodic jerky. And when she reaches the desk, he's almost in her pocket in the sense that they, you know, the blinds are down, they could make love but it doesn't happen. I think the, another reason it's being seen so much is because it's it's too intimate. <laughs> it's like, and Liz Merriweather did say that that's instead of sex, that's what we were showing. I originally wrote this to be a sex scene between them for legal reasons. We just decided not to do that, but I wanted this moment of connection or closeness. It was very long. I think we made it a little bit shorter and I definitely know that Hulu was like, can you please make this shorter? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I made you mad. I'm sorry. I think Sonny was completely in love with her till the end, you know, he may still be in some way. That's what I saw in, in the research that I did and the things that I'd seen. I, I, I saw this really weird like mismatched couple that clearly had something really strong at some point. There was like a safety there. They existed in their own plane. And I wanted to get into that and get in the nitty gritty of that. And the, the unhealthy aspects I wanted to show. It becomes apparent at this juncture 
um, you know, if people hadn't clued in before that it's really going tits up. Sunny is potentially calling it quits, not only on the company, but on their relationship. What, like, like you quit? The company? Us. The idea that they had never talked about just quitting or just like walking away from all of it. I felt like they would have at some point. And so this was a scene where I was allowing them to entertain that possibility. And that felt like um, important to me because it, it, and it felt like the right moment for that, you know, like right before the launch of Walgreens that they would kind of try to just see what it would feel like to, to, to just stop. This is the first time he's had the courage to say, well, is, is this actually worth it? You know, it's, it's a very important moment, not in terms of like the relationship fracturing, because I, I believe that he's still in love with her, <laughs> even after she'd thrown him under the bus. That's the first time you see them realize how far apart they really are. There's such a contrast in that moment. He's basically saying, I think, is it me or is it Theranos? And she's like, it's both, <laughs> even though it's totally Theranos. It's always going to be Theranos, always going to be about Elizabeth Holmes. I don't understand. Are, are you breaking up with me? I don't know. She's kind of been the one with the power in the romantic relationship. And then if he kind of says he's going to quit the company and quit her and break up with her, then she's faced with what is her life without the company and without Sunny. It's incredibly important because it sums up their relationship. There's a, almost a, a wall which he can't penetrate. No one can penetrate it. And he's ostensibly the closest person to her. He knows the company's going tits up. He knows he should get out of this relationship. And you can see it in the scene. She's so charming. Who's going to break up with this girl? <laughs> no one. So, you know, hence it, hence it keeps going to its, you know, fateful end. Again, where things are so wrong, where you don't know whether to laugh or not, use, use the word cringeworthy. How far can you go in that before it becomes ridiculous? Uh, Uncle Ron died. Mom just told me. Who is Uncle Ron? our uncle. I think that that's, you know, the brilliance of the show is that it does walk that tonal fine line so well. It's a heartwarming scene, I find, even though it's, you know, funny and absurd and all the things that the dropout is. It doesn't really have a lot to do with the the plot of the episode. And, and Catherine Pope, my producer again, told me to put it back in because she knew that those kinds of scenes, like the dynamic between Elizabeth and Sunny were sort of my favorite thing about the show and, <laughs> and my favorite thing to write. I was sent afterwards a bunch of viral things, you know, once the show aired of, of her, you know, dancing across the office, which was, you know, really fun to see. For the audience to respond and to make it a meme and, you know, it's really it's very rewarding. People seem to really appreciate this, some, some, some moments that I also just had the best time shooting. So it's just a win-win. It's really, it's the, it's the best you can hope for, but you don't really hope for it because, you know, expectations kill you. I'm honestly so happy that people like this scene um, because I liked it so much. It was um, one of my, I think it's like my favorite scene in the show. And I just, uh, and I could never quite articulate why, and I still can't, but thank you for, <laughs> thank you for making this.